الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمدا رسول الله أشهد أن محمدا رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاة حي على الفلاح الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم that is, with Allah's name, the merciful benefactor, the merciful redeemer. Subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wallahu akbar, wa la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah, wa huwal aliyul adheem. That is, Almighty God is free from all imperfection. All the praise is due to Allah. There's no deity but the one deity, Allah alone. Allah is greater than anything we can imagine or do. And there's no true legitimate power except what Allah gives. And he is the mighty, the exalted, the magnificent. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lahu wa ashhadu an muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa alihi wa sabbihi ajma'in. That is, I bear witness that there's one deity, God alone, and there's none like unto him. And I bear witness that Muhammad is his servant and his messenger. The peace and blessings of Allah forever be upon Muhammad and upon his companions, the righteous all. Ammabad. That is, concerning after. We have exalted Allah and we have sent the salutations upon our illustrious prophet Muhammad, the African Arab prophet. And we do that because Allah has commanded us in the Surah 33 to send the salutation, the taslim, upon Muhammad. But we don't send worship upon him. We just send the salutations and acknowledgments of this great prophet who lived in Arabia over 14 hundred and fifty years ago or so. Praise be to Allah. I said 1450 years ago or so because we know that we're living in the year 1443 according to the lunar Muslim calendar. And our calendar dates from the time when Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, made an exodus from Mecca. His tribal wild savage people ran him out of his hometown mecca and he went to medina and we call that the hydra that is the migration the flight so our calendar begins that year when he left mecca and went to medina which was something like 250 miles from his hometown mecca and speaking of mecca i don't know if this is true but people have said that mecca is the actual physical center of the earth but Allah knows best on that particular uh, idea. But we do know that the pilgrims are seen going around the house that Ibrahim and Ismail built 24-7. And so if you were to take a camera from on high or in a plane or something, you could see the circumambulation, circumambulation I should say, of the uh, house that Ibrahim and Ismail built anytime. Praise be to Allah 
Subhanahu wa ta'ala, highly glorified and exalted is he. I'd just like to make a comment about the often recited phrase of Muslims where we say, La ilaha illallah. And some of you have heard me say this before, and I'm going to say it again because we have to always forever remember this reality. La ilaha illallah. We translate it generally as there's no God but Allah. And I would like to say to you that Allah is a translatable word from my studies, and it means the one and only deity, the one and only being existing that has the worthiness of you and I and all human beings in the entire universe worshiping him. That is Allah, the one and only deity. And so we know that so many times in the Quran, we see the word Allah, but we also see his attributes coming behind this term Allah, or this word Allah. Allah says things like, or reveals things like, Allahu Ghafur Rahim, and Allah is the one who forgives again and, and again, and he is merciful. So Allah is not enough to describe this great deity. So he has given us many attributes. Some say 99, but if you really counted them all, there's much more than 99. Even those 99 that you know of and we find in the Quran, it doesn't uh, do justice, if you will, to the magnificence of this great deity. In fact, he tells us in the Quran that he is high above those things that we ascribe to him. In other words, we cannot even conceive of the totality and the wisdom and the, the, the essence of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, highly glorified and exalted is he. So when we say la ilaha, we are saying there is no deity. And we put a ah on that H. And if you notice, I said la ilaha. I didn't say la ilaha. I said la ilaha like a hatchet, cutting off that particular little so-called deity or demigod, if you will. La ilaha illallah. Illa means except the one and only deity. So this la, which means no, in this construction in Arabic is a very, very powerful no. It, all, it almost means like Allah in this phrase is hollering at you. There is no deity illa Allah except the one and only deity. And that fatta on that H, la ilaha, is like a hatchet, cutting off, if you will, the very existence of any deity illa Allah except the one and only deity. So this is emphatic speech. And that la, that no, the preface is ilaha, is called the la or the no of absolute negation of the existence of the noun that comes after it. Another example, you find it in Al-Baqarah, the Surah 2, where Allah reveals, Dalikal kitabu la reiba. This is the book wherein there's absolutely no doubt. He puts a factor on the back, la reiba. Normally, in grammatical construction, it would be la rei bun, which is no doubt, like a soft no doubt. But when Allah puts the fatta there, it's emphatic. La ilaha, la rei ba. And there's many, many other examples in the glorious Quran. So you should know that the emotional, if you will, impact and the powerful impact of Allah's words cannot be had by just reading English translation. You find this la of absolute negation where Allah reveals la tabdila al-Qallah. And you will find absolutely no change in the creation of Allah. La, again, that powerful la of absolute negation, tabdila. He puts a factor on the lamb or the L on the word tabdilun. He could have said to us or revealed to us la tabdilun. And it would mean similar to the same thing, but this is an emphatic emphasis, if you will, on the fact that there is no change in the creation of Allah. 
And I take that to mean that if Allah has set forth in this creation that it takes two to make a human being, then it's going to always be that way. And so you all know where I'm going on that. But I want to just put that out there and move on to the real focus of my cookbook today. So I'd like to begin by reciting to you from the Surah 95. But before I do that, I want to just mention the title that I have set forth here on uh, Facebook Live and also on uh, Blog Talk Radio, uh, El Islam in Focus, which is the, the station that was uh, created by my dear friend, Mikhail Octop, who lives in Atlanta, Georgia, or somewhere in those precincts. I'm not sure if he actually lives in the city itself. So, as it indicates here, the topic, pardon me, let me give you the topic. The topic is Allah reveals eat of the good or lawful and good things. And I begin now by reciting from Surah to Ting. What Tini one day it's translated by Abdullah Yusuf Ali. And by the fig and the olive. So those of us who know something about the Arabic grammar, we know that this is much stronger than simply translating by the fig. Allah is hollering out that I swear by the fig that I have created and by the olive that I have created. And he's swearing by Turishini and by Mount Sinai, that mountain associated with Musa. And then the third ayah, why have the Baladil Amin? And this city of security, or this city made safe and honorable. Praise be to Allah. And continuing on in this particular surah. We have indeed, Allah says, created the human being in the best of modes, in the best of form. Now, if you notice, it's translated as we. Kalakna means we created. So we don't want you to put it in your mind that Allah, this deity, was with someone else like Jesus when he created the human being. Because we know that the Bible language gives you the English translation, let us make man in our own image. And some will take that to mean that Isa ibn Maryam, that is Jesus, the son of Mary, who had to be created himself, was there with Allah, this non-physical reality, this deity, creating the human being. And we categorically reject such uh, idea of believing that God had help in molding and shaping the human being or molding and shaping the universe itself. So Allah again says, We have indeed created the human being in the best of modes. So what is the we? I heard Imam Warti Muhammad talk about how if you want to um, have a lot of uh, strong sperm, if you will. One of the main contents of the sperm is vitamin E. And there are times when men go to the doctor and they say, well, I'm trying to impregnate my wife, but I'm having problems. And so the doctor will say, well, you need to eat some more wheat germ, some, something that has some vitamin E in it, you know. And so the corn that we eat, the meats that we eat, the fruit and vegetables that we eat, makes up the sperm, if you will, in various uh, ingredients that is necessary to produce the impregnating sperm, if you will. And we know that the ovum or the egg of the woman, it is produced from that which we eat out of the earth. That's what, that's what we wanted you to understand. So the we is the the food that we eat, the sunshine and the rain and the dirt that uh, is a part of the process of bringing out fruit and vegetables and food for us to eat and so on. 
So this we is the authoritative we where, yes, I, Allah, have set up a process, and it's more than one process, so he's speaking in the plural to let you know that there's a process for the creation of the human being. There's a process for everything that God has created. Praise be to Allah. So he mentions the we in the Quran many, many times, but understand that that we is this authoritative we. This is Allah himself utilizing that which he created. The angels, the water, the sunshine, the, the elements, the minerals, and so on and so forth. So continuing on, after Allah declares that he has indeed created the human being in the best of forms, then do we abase him to be the lowest of the low. When we say we abase him, we should understand that Allah is not doing the abasing. How do we know? Because Allah tells us in the Quran that I have not wronged you. You have wronged yourselves. So we must understand that this abasement that occurs, it comes as a result of the human being's deviation from the mode, deviation from what is honorable, what is right, what is just, what is lawful and good. Then he gives us the exception in the next ayah, which is six. Except, in other words, you will not be abased and become the lowest of the low. Except those who believe and do righteous deeds, for they shall have a reward unfailing. For lachum, belonging to them, edrin gairu mamnun, a reward that's never failing. Then Allah asks you and I the question, two questions here. Fama yukadibuka ba'adu then what can, after this, contradict you as to the judgment to come? In other words, cannot you see that Allah has put you into, put us into a great mode and we deviate from it? But those who have this faith in God and engage in righteous work and righteous deeds that's better than 50%, they will have a reward I'm failing. So why did I say 50%? Last week, if you listened to my khutbah on El Qariya, I talked about how Allah says, and he whose good deeds will be found heavy, fahuwa fi ishaiti radiya. And he whose bad deeds outweigh the bad, the good deeds, the bad deeds outweighing the good deeds, fa'ummuhu hawiya. And his mother will be a bottomless pit, a nurturing agent in the pit, for those of us who had more than 50% of bad on our slate. In the final ayah, أَلَيْسَ اللَّهُ بِأَخَّمِ الْحَاكِمِينَ The question, is not Allah, is not the one and only deity, the wisest of the judges? So here Allah is putting this in what we call the superlative form. If you know anything about English grammar, usually words like uh, the best, the finest is a superlative. Better is the comparative. Taller is a comparative. But Allah is putting this in the superlative to let you know that he is conceding and he knows the reality. That he has allowed judges to exist on the earth. And we also know living here in America, here in 2021, that many of these judges have become corrupt and have been abased to be a part of the lowest of the low. In fact, they are lower than animals because they are on the position of being justice givers, but they give not justice. They get in cahoots with the Trumps and the other corrupt people, and we have unjust judgments coming forth out of the court system in America and in throughout the world in many cases, I'm sure. So Allah is asking you the question that he is the just of the judges. Is not he the just of the judges? 
And the answer we know is absolutely yes. So Allah is letting you and I know that he put us in a form that is excellent. We all came out pure and undefiled and we deviate and so on and so forth and we will be judged. We have a moral judgment, a moral accountability before our deity. That is the one and only deity. And we call him Allah, which is merely the Arabic word for the deity, the God in English, as you know. Praise be to Allah. So I want to go back for a moment, if you would bear with me, and talk about some of the tafsir that Imam Warfi Muhammad gave on the fig and the olive. And I believe it has great merit. This is a developmental type of a situation in these first three ayahs, according to what I recall him saying. And from my study, Allah is referring to the fig. I swear by the fig. The fig is a very, very soft uh, uh, fruit. And it has a lot of tiny seeds. In fact, I've been eating them lately. And so Allah is swearing by these tiny seeds that's very, very uh, soft. And then he swears by the olive. And you know the olive has a very, very hard seed. So the Imam Warakdi Muhammad had mentioned that the fig would suggest unstructured knowledge or not clear exactly. And he mentioned that a person might say to you, oh, that's just the figment of your imagination. Now, in other words, it's your imagination, but it hasn't become a solid reality. They use it a figment of your imagination. But the olive has a hard seed. In fact, it'll break one of your teeth if you try, try to bite down too hard on it, right? I believe the Imam mentioned that too. At any rate, what the suggestion is, is that you go from unstructured knowledge and creative ideas and imaginations and all of that to bringing something that's hard and solid and real. And then the second ayah, he swears by the Mount Sinai. So from getting into a situation where you have unstructured knowledge, you build structured knowledge, and from, from structured knowledge, you build a government. I'm saying to you that the mountain is a reference to government. And after building the government and getting away from all of the barbaric stuff that we have in the society, we can make the city safe. And this city made safe. And they translate Abdul Yusuf Ali, that is, and this city of security. So we believe that Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was known to be an honorable, trustworthy person. And through trials and tribulations and so on and so forth, Allah had Muhammad return to Mecca and made the city safe, made the city what it should be, a nation, a city, a world is what we really want that is following the dictates of God and the wicked people are either destroyed or don't have much of an influence. Now we know that we can't force people into following God, but if we establish strong government, Islamic government, then we could get rid of a lot of the foolishness that we see in the world today. Praise be to Allah. So this is the surah, again, called at teen And Allah is talking about the development. And so this human being that was created in the best of modes, he digressed. But Allah letting you and I know that if we perform righteous deeds, we can make the city safe, and we can have a judgment where we will go into the gender, into the paradise. Praise be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Highly glorified and exalted is he. So I'd like to take your attention now to the, the surah 2, verse 168, where Allah reveals, Yeah, you had nasu, kulu, Halalan Tayiban Wala T 
tetabiu kutawatis shaitani innahu lakum aduwun mubin translated O ye mankind, O human beings, O human family. Abdullah Yusuf Ali is translating uh, and Nas as O ye people. And he translated sometimes as O mankind. But I would like to say to you that Allah is referring to human beings, male and female, whether they are children or adults. O you human beings, Allah is commanding us, Kulu, eat of what is on earth lawful and good, and do not follow the footsteps of the evil one. The evil one is Shaitan, for he is to you an avowed enemy, an open enemy. An open enemy is the Shaitan. So we want you to know that when we speak of Shaitan, we speaking of those things that exist in the human life that we know to be wrong, evil, and not in accord with the true scripture, and not a, in accord with our very natures that dictates to us in many ways without scripture of what would be on our do and don't list. So the word shaitan in Arabic means that which is far removed from righteousness. So we don't believe at least most Muslims don't believe that have studied the Quran, that shaitan is some force that doesn't have a human body or a body to dwell in. We don't believe in certainly a, a, a man with a red suit with a pitchfork down in the uh, bowels of the earth. We believe, O oh, Muslims, that weak ideas, and the Imam has said this, wrong thinking and deviation from the straight path that God has set forth is shaitanic or satanic if you will so those who make the women take off their clothes those who take grapes and let them ferment and become alcohol and we are drinking it and destroying our brain cells those who take fig fig the fruit fig and let it ferment and become old and drink fig alcohol they had fig alcohol back in uh, Saudi Arabia. They had uh, date palm alcohol. So these things that Allah has said is lawful and good, they are lawful and good, but if you let them die and ferment and they put it in your system, there's going to be some negative consequences. And we know this is a reality. Many of us have partaked in alcohol, drugs, you name it, and have destroyed our life longevity if you will we've sh shortened our lives cut off our longevity because of deviating from what Allah has revealed and I find it very very appalling to me that some Christians believe that the great prophet Jesus the son of Mary was drinking alcohol drinking wine you know and then they have the used to have it in the Catholic Church I don't know about now where they would drink Mogan David wine during the, uh, the communion that they would have. And even in some of the uh, Baptist churches, they did it back in the day. But I'm told now that a lot of times they just have grape juice. But at any rate, we know from scientific discovery, from what Allah has blessed us with, that we have the ability to discern and to figure out what is harmful to the body and what is good for the body good for the human being. Praise be to Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Highly glorified and exalted is he. So Allah is clearly telling you and I in a command form that we have to be engaged in finding out what is lawful and what is good and wholesome for us to consume. And when we're talking about consumption, we're not just talking about what we put into our physical body, but we're talking about what we put into our mind's eye, what we put into our philosophy of what life is about, what we put into our mind as the hawk, the truth from God. And I tell people all of the time, and if this is one of my legacies, I hope it is, that I don't believe anything 100% except the glorious Quran.
Quran and Majid. Anything else? I'm always open for questioning it. And I would encourage you to be that way too. They would call a person like me a Qurani Yoon. Like he's just focused on Quran, you know. Well, through time and through reading and through getting, I believe, spiritual converse with this great deity, it has increased my faith in this Quran being 100% the word of God. Praise be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So continuing on, there are six fruit. I have a hard time saying that word fruit sometimes. <laughs> F-R-U-I-T mentioned in the Quran. And they are, and there's some dispute on whether or not banana is mentioned directly. But at any rate, bananas, fig, olives, pomegranates, grapes, and dates are mentioned in the Quran in various verses. And I don't have time today to go over all of the, the verses where they are mentioned, but I can give you the verse numbers. And if you are a student of the Quran, and you should be, you should take the time to write these uh, verses down and take a look. So we're talking about you and I eating what is lawful and what is good so we can have longevity. And you know as well as I know that unfortunately as we get older we begin to think more about our health where we should be thinking more about our health when we're younger. In fact, I'm of the mind now, and I wish I was of this mind before, that we should study the anatomy, the whole human being. I'm talking about how the brain is structured, how our backs are structured, how our necks are structured, how our stomachs are structured, all of the human body parts, we should learn about them. And we should have a new wave of teaching children where they can tell you, well, that's my uh, esophagus, that's my, uh, uh, my kneecap, and give the, the term that's used for the kneecap and so on and so forth. So these are important things that we got to start focusing on more. And I'm late in focusing, but I want to encourage you, as I'm encouraging myself, to begin to read about the anatomy of the human being, the body of the human being, and start looking at the content of the foods that we eat. So I would say to you, without a doubt, that there's a reason why Allah mentions the fruit, the six fruit that I stated just a few moments ago. And I know from eating pomegranates that there are many, many small seeds in it. And uh, I sometimes will eat one while I'm watching a basketball game or something like that. I know it takes a little while to open it up and you see so many nice form seeds in pockets like, like uh, cells and whatnot. Very, very organized fruit, if you will, the pomegranate. They used to call them Indian apples, and I didn't eat many when I was young, but I do eat them now, and I also purchase pomegranate juice. So why am I mentioning this? Because if you read up on the pomegranate and read up on what it is contained with or what's, what's contained in it, you'll find that it's very, very good for the human being. And one of the main things they say that it is an antioxidant, meaning it kills off uh, things that are toxic in the uh, in the body and it does other things too which I don't have time to explain all of the things but I've read some of it here of late about the uh, pomegranate so the pomegranate you'll find it in the Surah 55 verse 68 and it's in other verses too you'll find the verse where it mentions uh, and some say that this is referring to the banana but some people will question that. But if you read about the banana and its, its properties, its essence, its ingredients, you will be convinced that this is a good thing for me to eat. The banana reportedly helps cure fevers. It's good for the heart. It helps maintain the sugar balance. It's an energy booster. It promotes red cell production keeps the chemical balance among bodily fluids, help energy production, and provides endurance. 
against stress. In other words, it helps your mental apparatus. It improves the meto metabolic system. And it is a cure for anemic diseases. And then it talks about the banana being 75% water. So isn't it wonderful that we have chemistry and chemical knowledge where we can tell you what percentage of this or that is in a particular thing, whether it be a fruit or vegetable or whatever. It says it has 1.3% protein and it has 0.6% fats, not very much fat. Each banana also contains carbohydrates. And we know carbohydrates gives us energy, energy, and a considerable amount of potassium, which is a very, very important uh, mineral that we need in our, in our bodies. Bananas are rich also in vitamin B6 and also plays a significant role, it says, in triggering the chemical reaction of proteins and amino acids that are instrumental in keeping the brain functioning normally. Praise be to Allah. So you will find these rundowns, if you will, on the, the grape, the banana, the uh, olive, the um, fig, and so on, as being fruit that we should eat of, as Allah has revealed, eat of the lawful and good things that he has provided. Praise be to Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And also, in the Quran, it talks about various vegetables. And in the Surah 2, I believe it's verse 266, where Allah reveals, and remember, you said, O oh Moses, we cannot endure one kind of food always, so beseech thy Lord for us to produce for us of what the earth groweth of its pot herbs and cucumbers, its garlic, lentils, and onions. So here we know that these items are very, very popularly consumed. The uh, olive, we know, is a standard item from the Mediterranean countries, the Middle Eastern countries, as well as the, the fig, and we also eat it here in, in America and other parts of the world. The date, Muslims eat the dates a lot during Ramadan. So if you were to read about the date, you'll see why it is a fruit that you and I should eat of, not just during Ramadan. So I'm encouraging you, as I'm encouraging myself, to become students of what we eat and also students of the scriptural knowledge too, so we can have the spiritual food and the physical food so we can have longevity. You know, I was just thinking the other day, I said, now, if I was a person that lived a very, very um, immoral life and I came to the realization that I did, then the first thing I would do is say, well, hey, I want to be able to live a long, long time to right the wrongs and, and pray that God will remove and erase my bad deeds so that my good deeds will outweigh my bad deeds in the latter part of my, my life. But the better alternative is to do what we need to do as we grow, as we get older, as we are young, pardon me, and as we get older, we'll be appreciating the good life that we lived and we don't have to have any fear that our good deeds will not outweigh our bad deeds. So it's a no brainer that you and I should preserve our bodies so that we can live and do as much good as we can. And if we had did bad in our early life, we want to live long so that we can right the ship and go into the Jannah, into the paradise that God has set forth and really enjoy the fruit of our efforts and our, our labors here in this uh, world, in this life that we live, that Allah has decreed. For us. And Allah tells us in the Quran that every soul 
Kulu nefsin ba ikatul mau. Every soul shall have a taste of death. So we will die. We know that for sure. And we know that death hurts us when we see our loved ones die and we see the suffering that exists in the world. But you and I have to have faith that this deity is never unjust to his servants and the life to come is better for us in kuntum ta'alimun if we only all but knew. And we know that this is a very, very short sojourn here on the earth. Very few of us live to be 100 years old. But Allah tells us in the Quran that the paradise will be abadan forever. And we'll never be asked to leave. Many of you have heard me say that before. And that's a beautiful thing to know that this God welcomes us into his garden if we make the grade and we'll never be asked to leave. ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد إن هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب. Our Lord, cause not our hearts to swerve and deviate after you guided us aright, but bestow upon us mercy from your presence, for surely you are the grandest of the givers. Amen. Now the second part of the khutbah. اللهم نستعينك ونستغفرك. وَنُؤْمِنُوا بِكَ وَنَتْوَكَلُّ عَلَيْكَ وَنَفْنِي عَلَيْكَ وَقَيْرَ وَنَشْكُرُكَ وَلَا نَكْفُرُكَ O oh Allah, we ask for your help, we ask for your forgiveness, we believe in you, we trust in you, and we extol and exalt you in the best manner, and we are thankful to you, Allah, and we are not ungrateful. To continue more, I've heard it said, and I haven't really read it myself, but I got this information from a person who I trust that gives good information, that the Mediterranean diet of having hummus and consuming olive oil and, and the other foods that they partake in, a lot of salad, a lot of, you know, fruit and vegetables, caused them to have more healthy life. And we know from living in America that this fast food industry and the, the uh, processed foods and all of that is destroying our bodies and affecting our minds as well. So we need to have a new wave of looking at food as being medicine. And not always I want it because it tastes good. We got to get to the point of looking at these foods and examining them and reading about them and knowing what is the best thing that I should put into my body. What is the best thing that I should put into my body to help my mind function properly? How much sleep should I get? And so on and so forth. And if we do that, we'll have a more healthy life and less physical suffering on this earth. And we know that our goal is to meet our Lord and we don't want to have to suffer as we come to our close in this earthly life. Praise be to Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, highly glorified and exalted is he. So I'd like to conclude by, again, encouraging you to study the human body and to start reading about what foods are good to eat and what foods are not good to eat. I close now. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala ali Muhammadin kama salaita ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim innaka hamidum majid Allahumma barak ala Muhammadin wa ala ali Muhammadin kama barakta wa ala ali Ibrahim fil alamin innaka hamidum majid O oh Allah bless Muhammad and the followers of Muhammad with the spiritual blessings, as you did bless Ibrahim and his followers with the spiritual blessings. Surely you are praised and magnified in our midst. And O oh Allah, bless Muhammad and his followers with the material blessings, as you did bless Ibrahim and his followers with the material blessings in all of the worlds. Surely you are praised and exalted in our midst.
he come. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, Ashhadu an Muhammadan Rasulullah, Hayya ala salah, Hayya ala al-falah, Qad qamit al-salah, Qad qamit al-salah, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah. We will do what we call two raqqa, two sections of prayer, and you won't see me, but you'll hear me, inshallah, God willing. So you're going to hear a little noise when I get up out of this chair, and some might say, why is he sitting down? Well, is there any rules in the Quran that says that you must stand up and be exalted a step or two above the people? No, I'm down to earth, and I like to have it known if you don't register that. There's no big eyes and little use. I'm your brother. I'm a human being just like you. And we are equal before God in the sense of we all came here in the best of modes. And we know that Allah tells us in the Quran that the greatest among you are those who have more, the most taqwa, the most reverence and obedience and devotion to what Allah wants us to be about. So I conclude with that and I is you and me and all of us with a Jumu'ah Mubarakat. Because Jumu'ah is a feminine word. It has a feminine T on the end. So in Arabic, the adjective must agree. So grammarian or someone who you believe knows something about the Arabic language. So Jumu'ah Mubarakah. Again, Jumua Mubarakah. So if you say to me, Jumua Mubarak, then that's bad grammar. If I say to you, Ramadan Mubarak, that's the grammar because Ramadan is masculine. So I say Mubarak. So if I say to you, Ramadan Mubarakah, that would be bad grammar because, again, Ramadan is masculine and, as I stated, Jumua Mubarak is not correct. It should be Jumua Mubarakat. And I ask that Allah bestow that upon us all. Amen. Allahu Akbar. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Maliki Yawm Al-Din Iyaka Na'budu wa Iyaka Nesta'in Ihdina Sirat Al-Mustaqin Sirat Al-Nadina Na'am عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar.
Akbar. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Ar-Rahmanirrahim. Maliki Yawmiddin. Iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'in. اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين نعمت عليهم غير المندوم عليهم ولا لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد الله أكبر سمي الله لمن حمد الله أكبر الله أكبر Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله ربي هب لي حكمة وحكمة بصالحين واسأل لي لسان صدق في الآخرين واسأل لي من ورثات جنة النعيم واكفر لي أبي إنه كان من الضالين ولا تكفني يوم يوباتون Our Lord, bestow upon us wisdom, unite us with the righteous, grant us honorable mention on the tongue of truth among the latest of the generations, make us inheritors of the garden of bliss and joy, and forgive our forefathers, for many of them were astray, and do not let us be in disgrace on the day that we are يوباتون, we are raised for the final judgment. Amen. That concludes the Jumu'ah Kutbah for the day. La yazalullahu muksinan ilayk. May Allah never stop being a good doer to you. In fact, I would make it in the plural, ilaykum, to you all. And don't forget my book, Lugatut Tanzil, The Language of Revelation, a book that will help you understand the glorious Quran so that you can get more utility out of it, more drive, more benefit. And here's a copy of the cover. I have it in front of you here on the screen. And if you care to secure it, you can email me, sadiq at msn.com, and give me your address where you want me to send it. And if you have Cash App, you can send the $50 cost to Sadiq J. That's, that's a dollar sign and then Sadiq J. S-I-D-D-E-Q, -D -D -E then the J. So I thank you for listening. And again, may Allah persist in blessing you all. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuhu. That is the peace of God be upon you and his mercy and his blessings and his paradise.